Hey, what's up guys? It's that blue Abarth here and today we'll be speaking about a very specific version of the Abarth 595 and that is the Turismo. I feel like we talk about the 145 and the Competizione all of the time and the Turismo doesn't get the respect and the love it deserves. And well, that's why I've decided to dedicate an entire video to the Turismo today going over everything that you guys need to know about it. So without any further ado, how about we get started? So the Turismo, pretty much the luxury version of the Abarth 595 and is an absolutely stunning car for sure. It adds so many features and things from the other two models and combines them to make an expensive luxury feeling car indeed. Really makes it into a sort of a baby Ferrari in a way and really allows you to cruise in style. Now the main things to go over with the Turismo is pretty much the stuff you get with it because like I said it comes with a lot of luxury touches that the Competizione and the 145 sort of don't have or are missing from the cars a lot of the time. Now with the Turismo you can get an abundance and a very wide range of paint options. The main one being bicolors. Now this means you can get a color on the top and a color on the bottom. So for example, you could have red on the top, black on the bottom or vice versa, or white on the bottom and black on the top. It's a very unique and very cool thing that Abarth have allowed us to get on the Abarth 595. And I absolutely love it. It's very, very common on the Turismos. You can get the bicolors on the 145 and the Competizione, but it seems to be quite hard to find them in that spec. It seems to be the Turismos that always seem to wear the bicolors, which is great because it allows you to get a more, well, easier time searching for one and allows you to have a lot of luxury parts with the car as well, which we will go over in a second. So along with the paint, you also get a nice array of wheels as well. Apart from the regular wheels that you get, you can get my wheels on the Turismos and I have seen quite a lot with them, but you do get the very nice Turismo wheels as well, or to be very specific, Gran Turismo wheels, and that is the official name for them in as well. And they are very, very nice indeed. Those seem to be the more common and the wheels that the Turismos wear the most. And it allows you to definitely tell the difference between the models from them having their specific wheels, which is fantastic. I mean, the Comp has the SS wheels, the Turismo has the Gran Turismo wheels, and then the 145 has the, well, the two wheels that you usually see on them, which I'll put up on the screen now. But coming back to tu the Turismo, you get so many features that, well, even come on the Competizione. So it's sort of a no brainer to go with a Turismo really, because it's pretty much a baby Competizione, but you get a lot more leather and Alcantara as well to add into the mix. Now, let's talk about power. With the Turismo, you get a very nice and very pretty rapid figure of 165 brake, that being assisted by well, the usual 1.4 turbocharged four cylinder, which is pretty awesome indeed. I mean, I've always loved the four cylinders in these cars and pretty much the only thing they change about them in each model is either the turbo or the power figure, which is fantastic indeed. Now with the Turismo, you do get a Garrett turbocharger with the car, which is pretty awesome. I've got to say. I mean, it saves you from spending five grand on a comp if you really want to go for the Garrett. So that is fantastic as well. 165 brake is pretty awesome too. I mean, that is definitely not slow. I mean, 145 brake in this was pretty rapid. So an extra 20 should definitely make the difference. That is for sure. Now with the Garrett, it will also provide a very, very noticeable extra kicker boost as well and will make it feel extremely nippy, that is for sure. Now with the Series 4, you do get 165, but this is a different case for the Series 3. It's not a massive difference, but on the Series 3, you do only get 160 as opposed to 165 on the Series 4. I mean, that ain't much at all, but hey, five brake horsepower, maybe that makes a difference. I mean, who knows nowadays? But yeah, so 160 on the Series 3, 165 on the Series 4. I'm not sure if the Series 3 is also powered by a Garrett. I haven't seen too many things about the Series 3 Turismo and its power specs, but all I do know about it, that it is 160 and it's turbocharged. It may be an IHI or it could be a Garrett, but either way, I do know that the Series 4 is powered by a Garrett Turbo, which is pretty awesome indeed. Now, 
How about we talk about the price? The price of a modern day Turismo is usually around 14, 15 or even 16 grand, which is not too bad for a 17 to a 19 plate. If we're talking about a series three, then it could be anywhere from eight to 12 grand, which is a fantastic price for a luxury hot hatch. And I mean, that is an excellent buy, I've got to admit. I mean, if I was in the position of getting in a bath and I wanted a Turismo, I'd definitely go for one, that is for sure. I mean, I'd probably be more tempted to go for the series four as the series three is I don't want to say dated, but I feel like with the Series 4, you get the touch screen, you get all the nice leather bits and bobs. It just feels a lot more modern and a lot more, I don't know, just a lot more nicer, I want to say. Because in the Series 3, of course, as we all know, we do get the radio instead of the touch screen. So it would be nice to have a fully luxury car with a modern layout as well. But don't get me wrong, I would happily have a Series 3 Turismo or any of the Series 3 or Baths for that matter. But... I feel like if you are spending that money, it'd be better to go for a Series 4 Turismo instead, as then it's as modern as you can get. So, how about now we talk about the interior, as that's probably the biggest change on the inside of the Turismo. Now, with the Turismo's interior, you get a very wide amount and quite a lot of leather, that is for sure. I was just trying to think of what to say there, because I've got to make sure I get all of this in for you guys. But yeah, so pretty much, a lot of leather is included in on the interior of the Turismo. The biggest change being the seats. Now you do get this style of seat, but it's in leather instead. And I did actually go to see a Turismo not too long ago and they feel absolutely amazing to sit in. The leather seats are super nice to look at and they're really, really comfortable. They're a bit more bolstered as well. I don't know why they felt a, a bit more stiff in a way, which is a good thing because it means there's not really you know, the opportunity to move around in them, if you, if you get what I mean. I think I've uh, probably explained that in a bad way, but pretty much you don't go side to side in them when you're driving and you feel a lot more connected with the seat as well. And as for, well, like I said, the quality of them, they were superb, stitched with a lovely quality leather as well. It was just amazing. I mean, when it comes to the seats in an Abarth, I have to say the Sabelts are the supreme seat, but the leather ones are just as good. And fun fact, you can get leather seats in a Competizione, but if you can get Sabelts, it's a no-brainer. But for the Turismo, the leather seats are wonderful. They do the car an absolute treat, that is for sure. And I think that's the deal breaker with them, really. If you can't get leather seats in a Turismo, I don't think you should go for it unless you can swap them in. You can do that. That is something I've seen a lot of people do. But I would say 95% of the time you can pretty much get the leather seats in any Turismo that you want to find or want to go and buy. So that isn't a problem. When it comes to the rest of the leather accents, you get leather on the door cards. More specifically, the little pieces that you get on the actual door card itself, the little like, uh, I don't really know what to call them, like door trims, and they can come in leather as well. You can either get them in brown or black or whatever color that the accents come with on the inside. Now, fun fact as well, with the older style Series 3 Competizione, there was a very specific spec that you could get. It was grey, it was Capello grey on the outside with black stripes and a full brown leather interior. I'm talking brown leather say belt seats and brown leather door cards or brown leather like door trims and the binnacle was brown, there was brown accents on the steering wheel. It was a lovely spec I've got to admit. Not so much nowadays that you can get that. I haven't seen many of them with that spec but I'm pretty sure you can. But coming back to the Turismo, you get a lot more leather things as well. You do get leather mats as well, which is pretty nice indeed. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the interior. You get a lot of nice leather bits. You get a leather binnacle. And of course, you get a leather gear stick setup as well, which is very nice. But you can get a Competizione shifter as well with the Turismo, which is a very intriguing fact, actually. I don't know why they decided to put a Competizione competizione i do struggle on that sometimes guys i don't know why they decided to put that on the turismo but it is a great way to get that shifter if you really want it feels great as well to use i have test driven a turismo and it was gorgeous not just to look at but to drive as well so i would definitely would recommend getting one but yeah pretty much on the interior it's as luxury as you can get and to add to that 
you can get a convertible version as well. And that does seem to be the gimmick for Turismo is that probably 70% of them are convertibles and they do have an electric folding roof as well. So there are two buttons up here usually around where your light is and pretty much you just press them and you can hold it and it goes all the way back. You can stop it at certain intervals as well, but it does usually go all the way back to the back of the roof. Also, fun fact as well, a lot of facts today, guys, you do get a different spoiler on the Turismo convertibles, that being more of a spiky spoiler instead of the traditional rounded off spoiler on the roof of the car of the hardtop versions. And it looks great. I think it looks fantastic. It sort of looks like a Maxton extension wing that you can buy for the Abarths. It's very nice indeed. And I'm, I'm actually really glad they decided to do that. But pretty much, yeah, you can either get it in a hardtop in a convertible or you can get a glass panoramic roof as well if you really want but it seems to be more common to get the convertible versions instead and why wouldn't you go for one they're absolutely beautiful in a convertible format and it's, it's just great roof down on a sunny day with the monza or whatever exhaust you have running it's just a great time gotta rate it for sure now other things about the turismo a viewer has actually put a comment on one of my recent posts asking me a couple questions about the Turismo and well that's why I made this video today because I'd like to answer them as well. So if you're watching my friend then here are the answers. Now I remember that one of them was do you get a Garrett turbocharger on the Turismos and yes you do. Mainly on the Series 4s though I think you do get them on the Series 3s but I'm not too sure I could be wrong about that. But as for the rest of it, I do remember that a lot of it was power figures and asking if you can get it to 210, 220. And yes, that is pretty easy to do so. Put a stage two on it or even a stage one, depending on what you have on it already. Exhaust, all that good stuff, and it will work like a charm and it will run safely as well. You can also fit the Brembo discs and calipers on the Turismo as well, as long as there's enough clearance with your wheels. With the Gran Turismo wheels you get on the Turismo, there are quite a lot of clearance on the back of them, so you should be all right. But you can pretty much fit the Brembo calipers and brake setup to any of the Abarths. As long as, well, like I said, you have the clearance for them, then it should be no problem as for the rest of the car it's pretty much well like any other above you can tune it and do whatever you want pretty easily as well without spending mad, mad amounts of money i've got to say uh, i'm just trying to remember the rest of the questions i should have wrote them down on a piece of paper really but i just wanted to go in today and see see how well i could do it just off the top of my head but um i think that was pretty much everything um there, there was one question, I believe it was, when did the Turismo get the Garrett turbocharger? And sadly, I can't answer that one. I would love to, but I imagine it's when the Turismo was introduced, which was around 2012. So I imagine that is when it got the Garrett turbocharger. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I will just take a second to uh, pop back in the house and see what the rest of the questions were. So I will um, get back with you in a second, just in case there is anything else to answer. Otherwise, we'll continue on. So I've just come back from the house and I can confirm I have answered all the questions that the viewer wanted me to answer. I really hoped I was able to give you enough detail and I hoped I was able to answer them properly. But just to quickly summarize and I'll just put the answers in a quick, short, simple form for you. Do the Brembos fit on a Turismo? Yes, they do. Just to make sure you have enough clearance. Can you map it to 220 or 210? Definitely. I have mine running at 210 right now and it does it safely. All you've got to do is just maybe do a stage one, stage two, an induction kit, not even a forged one, just maybe like a K and an air filter and maybe a pop-off filter, maybe an exhaust as well. But I would say a stage one and maybe stage two would definitely do it because we've got to remember it's running 165. So it wouldn't take that much to get it to 200. So yeah, definitely can do that for sure. Um, do any of them run 165? Yes, they do. The Series 4 ones will definitely run 165. So if you're wanting to buy a Turismo with 165 brake horsepower, definitely go for the Series 4 shape instead, as that is definitely guaranteed to give you that power figure. The Series 3 is 160. So just to keep that in mind. Uh, as for the rest of the questions, the Garrett turbocharger, when was it introduced? Probably around 2012 when the Turismo was also introduced as well. And um, as for the Garrett turbocharger question, I've just got to remember that one as well. 
oh, what was it? Does it come in the car, I believe? Yes, I do believe it does come in the Series 4. So, I think that is all of the questions, and I really, really hoped, like I said, I was able to answer them in some good detail. And, uh, well... Like I said in other videos, if you guys have any questions you'd like me to answer, whether they be about a baths, your bath, or even my bath, please let me know down in the comments or on any of my community posts. I'd be really happy to answer them for you. So, back onto the Turismo. Pretty much just some uh, final facts now, I guess. You can get any of the modern tech with them. The digital dashboard, the 7-inch touchscreen, the turbo bar, all of that good stuff is always included in the Turismo, as long as it's a Series 4 and the option did come with it. As well, a lot of us will probably know, when hunting for an Abarth, some of them may not have the features that we're looking for. An 18-plate Competizione might have a 4-inch touchscreen because maybe the owner didn't specify or, you know, put that option on the car when they bought it or decided to create it. Because that is just how it goes sometimes. You find a perfect to bath and then it might not have something that you've always been wanting to find on it. And that's just how it goes sometimes. But with the Turismos, they do come with a lot of tech and a lot of luxury materials as is. So it's not very hard to find the one you want in the desired color and desired specification as well, which is why Turismos are pretty great. They're a softer ride. They have tons of specification options to come with them and they're pretty nippy 165 brake or like i say that is a great power figure so that's definitely rapid for sure and it just allows you to get more of a luxury feeling out of them instead of going for that crazy aggressive sporty feeling that you get in the competizione and it gives you a bit more than the 145 brake t-jet so that's why it's a great middle ground and that's why it's great to go for the turismo because you get more out of it than maybe the other two models don't offer and for a steady price of, well, depending what the year is and all that stuff, I would say 15 grand is what you would probably looking at if you were going for a low mileage, high spec, good year, a Bath Turismo. And uh, well, you probably get one for cheaper, to be honest, because, hey, I've seen some for about 13 grand. So that's not too bad at all for a luxury hot hatch. And overall, pretty awesome car. And I've got to say, I absolutely love them. Now, there aren't many special edition. Oh, sorry, guys. There isn't many special editions of the 595 Turismo. You can get a 695 Turismo, which does come with Brembo brakes and 180 brake horsepower, which is pretty crazy, to be honest. But you still get all of that lovely Lever and Alcantara and a 7-inch touchscreen as standard. So if you want everything in a Turismo shape, then the 695 Turismo is the one to go for because it's very, very rarely that the 695 Turismos don't come with a certain like specification like seven inch touchscreen or anything like that because they're pretty much loaded. I mean, for almost 27 grand, I would hope that they were to be honest, but pretty much if you look around, you can find a great spec 595 Turismo instead for, well, pretty much half the price, to be honest. And it's worth doing so because then you get everything for, like I said, half the price. And it's just a steal, in my opinion. So, guys, that is pretty much everything for today. I really, really hope you enjoyed it. Oh, well, like I was saying, I really hope you enjoyed today's video, guys. I just uh, went to go chat with some friends that I haven't seen in quite a while. So uh, that was pretty cool. But yeah, pretty much, I really hope you enjoyed today's video, guys. And I really hoped I was able to uh, fill you in on everything you need to know about the Turismo. I mean, it's pretty much, well, I wanted to do a simple guide without including too much detail that may confuse you. I mean, pretty much when you talk about baths, they're not the same, but the basis is the same. So it's easy to talk about. And I really, really enjoy it. I mean, if you want me to do a Competizione video, then please let me know in the comments below. I'm thinking of doing a 695 video soon and going over all of them. And if you want to see that, again, please leave it down below in the comments. I'd be happy to get back to you on it and any other queries that you might have. But for now, that is pretty much it. So if you want to see any more content, well, such as the 695 videos or the Competizione video, you guys know what to do. Hit that bell, like, comment, and subscribe, all of that good stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Have a good one.